Hello nurse, this is your teacher Dr. Anam and today's topic is uptake of water by roots and their pathways. We know that roots they contain root hairs. The root hairs they are actually responsible for providing the large surface area for the absorption of water and minerals from the soil. What happens that they grow out into the space between the soil particles where they are in direct contact with the water. For example in this diagram you can see this is the root hair. This root hair is actually present in the soil and it will extend between the soil particles like that and because of this extension the surface area is increased and now the root is in direct contact with the water now the cell wall of the epidermal cells of the root is permeable to water and other minerals it means that water can easily enter into the root hair while the cell membrane is semi permeable it means it is going to allow some substances to enter into the root hairs and while the some substances they cannot enter so cell wall is permeable while the cell membrane is semi permeable the cytoplasm of root hair has high concentrations of salt here in this area high salt concentration is present and because of this high concentration what will happen the water it will move outside to the inside from higher water potential to the lower water potential by the process of osmosis now as the water is entering inside the cell this is known as end osmosis and if the water is moving inside the cell to the outside it will be known as exo osmosis along with the water the salts they also enter into the root hair now the entry of the salt inside the root here it may takes place by the help of diffusion or in some cases active transport also takes place what happened that after the entry into the root hair cells water and salts they will travel through the cortex here you can see this part here is cortex then it will enter into the endodermis this part here is endodermis and along with this they will travel through pericycle here is another layer of cells present which is known as pericycle and ultimately they will reach inside the xylem if you want to study the structure of root i will share the link in the i button you can check that video now when the water and salt reach in the xylem cells from these cells they will move upward to the other parts of the plants it means that xylem cells they are actually responsible for the transport of water and salts from the soil to the aerial or upper parts of the plants uptake of water by the roots is not one straight process but there are different pathways involved actually there are three pathways involved in the uptake of water by the roots one is apoplast second is symplast the third one is vacuolar pathway let's study one by one first of all apoplast pathway the word apo means away and plast means protoplasm when we talk about the protoplasm protoplasm mean we are talking about the cytoplasm plus nucleus so for example here we have a cell inside the cell as we are talking about the plant we have cell wall then this is cell membrane we have a large vacuole here and all this part here is cytoplasm so when we talk about the apoplast pathway it means away from the protoplasm in this pathway the water it will move away from the protoplasm cytoplasm and nucleus and it will move through the cell wall it means it will not enter in the cytoplasm or protoplasm but it will move outside into the cell wall and then it will move from one cell to another cell it involves the movement of water through the adjacent cell walls of the epidermis and cortex without entering the cytoplasm so this is the apoplast pathway in which water it will not enter in the protoplasm but it will move from the cell wall of the adjacent cells apoplast is a system of adjacent cell walls that are continuous in this diagram here you can see this red part you can see that this red part shows the movement of water by the apoplast pathway the water is moving through the cell wall of the adjacent cells you can see the cells they are together or joined together or they are near to each other so this is a continuous system of cell wall now what happened that this system it becomes discontinuous here you can see that water 
from the soil reaches to the cortex but in the endodermis it cannot enter now the reason be, uh, behind it that endodermis it contains casparian strips the casparian strips are actually water impermeable it means that they cannot allow the water to enter inside them and they are filling this inside part of the endoderm and because of this reason water will just reach to the cortex or to until this part by the help of apoplast pathway the second pathway is symplast pathway here the sim word means together with and plast word means protoplasm like i said protoplasm mean cytoplasm plus nucleus so this is a pathway which involves the entry of water inside the protoplasm or in other words the water is going to move inside the cytoplasm or protoplasm of the adjacent cell so it is a system of interconnecting protoplast in the root cell the cytoplasm of the neighboring cells is connected with one other by plasmodesmata here you can see this part here this is plasmodesmata plasmodesmata is actually the strands that extend through the pores in adjacent cells for example this is one cell this is another cell and this strand is actually connecting the cytoplasm of these two cells and this uh, this strand is known as plasmodesmata so because of this reason the water it will move here in this light blue color you can see the water is moving through the cytoplasm or through the protoplasm of the root entering in one cell then entering into other cell then another another cell and in this way it is entering into the xylem now water moves in between the cytoplasm through the plasma membrane and plasmodesmata it is a semi or partially permeable route it means that it will allow some substances to pass through it but some substances it cannot pass the last pathway is vacuolar pathway the vacuolar pathway means that it involves the entry of water in the vacuole or vacuole of the adjacent cells are responsible for the transport of water in this pathway water moves from vacuole to vacuole through neighboring cells crossing the symplast and apoplast pathway here in this diagram this dark blue line shows the vacuolar pathway you can see this light blue part here this one this is actually vacuole now the water is moving from one vacuole to another vacuole then again another vacuole of the adjacent cell so in this way from one vacuole to another vacuole the water is going to move by taking the vacuolar pathway now the water can encounter high resistance and as a result little flow usually occur making this pathway insignificant in comparison to apoplast and symplast pathway the vacuolar pathway is not very significant or not responsible for the transport of large amount of water or minerals or salts but less amount of water and minerals is moved through the vacuolar pathway because of the res resistance now when we talk about the resistance it means that vacuole already contains so many things because of that the movement of salt and water is difficult from one vacuole to another vacuole so that was all about the uptake of water by the roots and the pathways